Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, our service is being live streamed from St. Matthew's Church. We opened this morning. Um, we had 46 adults and five children, and we were able to socially distance them. Uh, it was different. It was very different, but um, everyone was happy to be back. So welcome to our service. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we'll have the same reading that we had this morning. So I'm going to welcome Dave in to do the reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking. And they said, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her de deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father. For such was your gracious will. <laughs> All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you o, Christ. o Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There are some people that you cannot please. In Matthew 11, Jesus can contrast his approach with that of John the Baptist. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. So many Christians think they are called to be people pleasers, peacemakers never upsetting the apple cart. Well, Jesus was not like that. He never belittled anyone, with the exception perhaps of the religious leaders of the day. You whitewashed tombs, clean on the outside, filthy on the inside, isn't exactly complimentary. He saw the best in people, hoped they would be their best, but said it as it was, with integrity and raw honesty. This did not always make him popular. 
To follow his example, we need a loving heart and a thick skin. Some people will always find something to moan about because deep down they are unhappy and struggling and they need to project that onto something they feel they can control. Surprisingly, in Jesus' time, even witnessing supernatural miracles didn't lead people to repent and follow Jesus' teaching. And throughout his ministry, Jesus showed annoyance with crowds who flocked to see a popular leader do something unusual. He wanted from them not applause, but commitment. He recognised with a degree of frustration that the wise and learned are slower to grasp the truth than children. Maybe it's because a little knowledge can give people a false sense of their own power and importance. We witness this with every man and his dog posting something about the coronavirus on the internet. And then the media, hungry for a new angle, reporting on this. Conspiracy theories, false assumption and fake news flooded the internet. Any truth became obscured. It makes it harder to decipher when there are little splinters of reliability hidden amongst the dross. The same principle can be applied to following Christ. These are things I hear on a regular basis. I don't need church or organised religion. I find God in nature. Well, so do many of us. A beautiful sky, birds singing, lifts one's soul towards the beauty of the Creator. But Christ left a clear command for his followers to be the church. That's us, to be the church. To support each other, learn from each other to make disciples of all nations. A private prayer out in the beauty of nature is actually a bit self-centred, if that is all you do. When a soul truly embraces Christ, he, she, naturally starts looking outwards, beyond themselves, to the needs of, to the needs of others and the relentless clamour of their own needs and egos begins to dim, which has the knock-on effect of bringing unexpected happiness and a sense of peace into one's life. I hear so many excuses for people not joining a Christian community. And joining online, live streaming, Zooming, that is all absolutely fine. I hear so many excuses. Well, the grandchildren come, came along and we were too busy. Or one I've heard recently, the church is full of sanctimonious hypocrites. I heard this one and replied with a fair degree of anger. For that's not my experience at all. My church is full of generous, wonderful people who are doing their best to be the people of God in this community. We all share our experiences of being Christ followers, learn from each other and grow our souls. Now, before I get off this particular bandwagon, I throw you listening today a challenge. Find a Christian community 
whether tradition suits your spirituality or personality. Get on the inside and change it for the better. Be the change you want to see. Keep working towards making this earth a bit more like heaven. Like John the Baptist and Jesus, they stood out and confounded the expectations of their time and their place in history. Last week, Bournemouth Beach was filled with people seeking to enjoy the sunshine, while parents are still reluctant to send their children to school. Safety is contrasted with normality. Economics seem to be in conflict with health. Where is wisdom? Where is common sense? It is here. Look no further. Jesus offers wisdom. He begins by thanking God. And that could be the way in which we begin, by reflecting on our own context and what there is to thank God for. Jesus then recognises our vulnerability by inviting those who are weary to come to him and promising them rest. Weariness can have a multitude of causes and can manifest itself in a variety of ways. The impact of COVID-19 and lockdown has been mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. Its toll should be recognised. And in that context, Jesus' offer taken seriously. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So this afternoon, rest your weary spirits in the knowledge that Christ is with you. The supernatural strength of the Holy Spirit is upon you. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, you invite and welcome us, whether we are singing joyfully or weeping mournfully. To you we bring ourselves, our community and our world. For those who rejoice and are filled with energy, give ways to express their joy wisely and compassionately. For those who are worried and apprehensive, grant wisdom and peace. For those who are eager to be out and about, to be with others, to be sociable, grant sens sensitivity and patience. For those who are exhausted in body or in spirit, let the lightness of being yoked to you bring comfort and encouragement. Enable us and all our decision makers to see the wider picture and to respond with your wisdom. In your name we pray. Amen. And now we say together the prayer our Saviour, our Lord Jesus Christ, taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. So, the church will be open again next week at 10 a.m. We've got lots of measures in place to keep everyone safe. Um, but if you are unable to come because you are still vulnerable and shielding, I will live stream, David and I will live stream again, the same reading and the same sermon from this morning. So you can feel part of our community. You are part of the community of St. Matthew's. God bless you. Amen.